Um, okay, so chapter six is where we start our applications of integration. So um, chapter six is pretty fun. Uh, we're going to look at areas between curves, which is kind of like, um, it doesn't seem very practical, but it's kind of like one of those foundational things that, that we uh, use a lot throughout our um, applications. And then after that, we're going to take our idea of slicing into uh, really small pieces and adding them up uh, idea to calculate volumes of all kinds of weird uh, solids. So that's really fun. Um, so uh, that's really what uh, the whole chapter is about. Uh, and then in Calc 2, you kind of take a, sort of like a step back and then a step forward. You'll start off with learning more integration techniques, like integration by substitution, but different ones. Um, and then you'll go back to more applications of integration and you'll use those integration techniques. So, um, so you pick up pretty much right where you leave off, yeah. Um, okay, all right, so let's get started. So let's say uh, you have uh, two functions. Let's say uh, f of x and uh, g of x. And you want to find the area between them. OK, so <clears throat> let's just draw a little picture here. Uh, let's say you have, so how about, uh, let's say f of x is in green. Uh, something like this. And then let's do g of x is in purple. So let's say something like that, let's say. And so what we're looking for, the area between the curves is basically that right there that's in the red. Okay, so um, so that's what we're looking for right there. Now, um, so here, for example, well, let's just say hypothetically we're saying this is A here and then this is B. All right, <clears throat> so what's a good strategy for, um, for finding the area between the curves? Um, well, what's our, what's our only tool really that we have at this point for finding areas? Integration. integration. And what does integration give us? It'll give us the area underneath the curve, meaning between the curve and the x-axis. It'll give us the signed area, right? <coughs> um, so like right here, for example, let's just say, so we're going to make a little dynamic picture here. Uh, let me pick a better color. How about, well, let's do green for, okay. So uh, if I, for example, say, okay, well, let me draw the area that is represented by this integral right here. So what would that be? That would be the area underneath f of x, right? Okay, so it would be, if I color it, let's say with vertical bars, it would look like that, right? So it would be like this. <clears throat> okay, now notice this would be positive, right? And then this area down here would be uh, negative. You guys agree with that? Okay, so uh, that's fine. Um, all right, now uh, let's say, let's do the same thing with g of x. So if I draw here, so the a integral between a and b of g of x. So what would that be? That would be the area underneath g of x, right? So let's say I use, um, I'll do horizontal bars for that. So the area under g of x looks like, it would look like this, right? And then it would look like that. And then over here, It would be all, all that stuff, right? Okay, so I'm looking to <coughs> combine the green 
vertical bars, which is the first integral, and the purple horizontal bars, which is the second integral, so that I end up with the red diagonal bars. So why don't we look at it uh, piece by piece here. For example, uh, let's see. Right here in this little section right here. So just look at that little part right there. So just kind of ignore everything else. If I wanted to find that um, the area, only the area between the red, or between the two curves, between F and G, um, how would I how would I do that? I would subtract one from the other, right? Do you guys see that? So note it. Which one would you subtract from which? Exactly. So notice if I subtract F, the integral the area under f of x minus the area under g of x. So if I, if I kind of look at it, the area under uh, g is, let's see. So the area, sorry, the area under, under f is everything here, right? All that right there. And then if I subtract the area under g, what am I doing? I'm subtracting that part right there. Do you guys agree that that's the area in between the two curves? Does that make sense how we did that? Okay, so that's good, right? So we're getting somewhere. Okay, so we did that section. Uh, how about, okay, let's see. Let's look at another section. How about from here to where they intersect right there, maybe? Or no, let's look right here, actually, where they before they intersect. Let's look uh, here where uh, this one crosses right there. <clears throat> so this is something that, that trips up students a lot. Um, so if I'm looking for the area between the two curves, right? So everything in the red, meaning I'm looking for uh, all of that right here, like that, right? That's what I'm looking for. Okay, how would I find that? It would be f of x. Exactly. So it, it is minus because what's the purple area? What is that? That's negative, right? So you want so you want all of this area, right? So remember this area, the purple that's below the x-axis, that's gonna be negative. So when you subtract it, you're really adding it, you're putting it all together. Does that make sense? So one th key thing to notice here is that is that any different from the integral we just wrote down? No, right? It's exactly the same thing, right? So notice we don't have to distinguish between, we don't have to worry about the function going below the x-axis. You still only subtract, um, well in this case, f minus g. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. So. Now, uh, the next little section here, um, right here until they intersect, what would that be? If I'm looking for the area between uh, the two curves, so notice it's exactly the same, right? So I'm, I'm looking for this right here, this little kind of triangle thing. So notice what would I do? I would subtract the area under the green, right, minus the area under the purple. And that would give me the area between, right? So that also is exactly the same. So this is looking pretty nice, right? So, yes. Yes. Exactly. As is the third one. Yeah, so one thing to, um, okay, so one thing that's important, because yeah, this does confuse a lot, of, um, a lot of students, is when we're looking for the area between the curves, we're, we're looking for um, the area in absolute value between the curves, right? So 
uh, for example here you know if I have some function down here and some function down there and this area here is 4 it doesn't matter that they're below the x-axis what matters is how much area do you have there so that's what you're counting so that's why uh, this function here is below the x-axis so when you evaluate the integral you get a negative number but um, but what you want to know is what's the total area between them so you subtract it but you're actually adding the area itself right so it's negative so you subtract it so you add it uh, but the nice thing is you don't have to change uh, anything that you do because it's all built in right so you still subtract f minus g and that still gives you the area uh, between the two curves regardless of whether it's above or below the x-axis that's the key takeaway okay now but what about from uh, this last section here uh, let's see uh, I don't know okay I'll do this it's black <laughs> all right how would I find this area exactly it changes right because so notice how this time you have to subtract it differently right you have to subtract g of x minus f of x yes But you're not actually getting the absolute value. Okay. Yeah, so you have to be careful. So um, so this, I mean, more than anything, this is kind of like a thought experiment to kind of figure out what, what we need to do. But um, so two important takeaways. One is that you don't have to worry about whether the function itself is positive or negative. That's what we learned right here. And then the other thing is that what matters is which function is greater or lesser which in this case would be which functions on top and which ones on the bottom because notice you always are going to subtract to the function that's on top minus the function that's on the bottom or the greater function minus the lesser function does that make sense yeah I mean the value of the function which when you're looking at it graphically uh, it's the y value right yeah so uh, the reason why I insist on greater as opposed to, to always top is that we're gonna look at functions of y so they'll be flipped kind of and then there greater would be on the right lesser on the left so you have to look at it sideways so that's why um, okay so <clears throat> the other thing so one of the things that we need to know we're going to need to know is uh, the intersection points intersection of f and g because wherever they intersect you're going to have to change the uh, order does that make sense okay so let's write the, those kind of observations down and, and we'll kind of so this is our strategy strategy for finding the area between curves. Is the intersection point in any way sort of related to an intersection point? No. Nope. Um, okay, so, um, so find the intersection um, points we'll say if any um, and then the area between curves is equal to the integral um, and here I'll just put a and B uh, but maybe we'll put a little note here that you want to make sure that we split at the intersection points you don't always have them but if you do uh, you want to make sure that you do that 
and then um, and then you want to do the greater function minus the lesser function. Oh, sorry. Okay, so let me just do um, a picture example here. So let's just say hypothetically you have, um, okay, so I'm gonna make up some numbers here. Let's say we have minus four, one, I don't know, three, something like that. And uh, let's see, let's say we have Something like that. This is F. And then let's say G is something like that, maybe. And we want to find the air er this area right here. So <coughs> what would be the uh, the setup here so the area how would I describe it with integrals it would be the integral from oh sorry so I forgot to label the purple so the purple function is G the green one is uh, F so what would it be the integral from negative 4 to 1 I would do f minus g plus, right, from 1 to 3 of g minus f. Does that make sense, kind of the strategy? Okay, so in there, you know, you would have the functions, find where they intersect. Where do they intersect? Well, <laughs> where they equal to each other, right? Um, and then just set up the integrals. Uh, <coughs> where you have greater minus lesser. So notice this is f of x, and then this is g of x, right? Yes? Uh, are we finding the net area? No, you're not finding the net area. So because net area is where you count the area that's negative is negative, positive is positive. So, um, okay, all right. So now, uh, let me just... Uh, throw you for a bit of a loop here. So suppose you have f as a function of y and g as a function of y. So like let's say you have, so let's do same two colors. So we'll do, uh, oh I don't know, something like this. So what does that look like? Uh, let's say 5. That looks like minus 5. And then let's see. How about... Okay, so what is that? That looks like 1, maybe? Uh, this looks to be about minus 2. Okay, so the idea is exactly the same. What's the difference? The difference is that greater and lesser is you look at it differently, right? So here in this case, f is a function of y, meaning y is the input. What would be the output? It would be x, right? So, um, so then where's the greater? Well, just think of the number line, right? These are positive, these are negative. So whatever's m further on the right is greater, further on the left is lesser, right? So, okay, so what would be, so in this case, the area that you're looking for is this right here, right? So that, that, that. So right away, notice how many integrals am I gonna need? Three integrals, right? 
So the area in this case is going to be the integral. Okay, so from where to where? Five to two. Mm -mm. Negative 5 to 2, exactly. Just like with, because it's you're going from smaller to larger, right? So what's the smallest y value? Well, it's minus 5, right? To minus two. So instead of going left to right, now you're going bottom to top. Okay, so minus 5 to 2, and what would that be? F minus G, right? Notice it's dy. Why? Because we're integrating with respect to y because they're functions of y. Okay, good. Uh, and then plus, right? From where to where? Negative 2 to 1. Yep. And then what is that going to be? G minus F this time. Because now G is greater, right? Because G is further on the right. Okay, good. And then last but not least, 1 to 5. F minus G. And notice these are all Y values, right? So if I even specify Y equals Y equals, you don't have to, but that's what they are. And these are X values back here on the other example. So the idea doesn't change really. Uh, it's just you're looking at it differently. Um, and you'll see as we you know, start applying integration, very often we need to look at things uh, from a different point of view. So, um, so it's important to get the hang of it. All right, so is the idea clear? It's kind of the strategy. Okay, so let's do an example. So let's say we have, um, we want to find the area between, so y equals x squared, y equals root x, um, x equals 1 fourth, and x equals 1. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to draw a picture. Um, so the picture might seem unnecessary sometimes, uh, and you don't always need it, but it's um, good to have it, especially when it gets more difficult. Um, and when we do the volume stuff, it's always good to have a picture to look at. Um, so, so we should get into the habit of doing it. So let's see, how about, so y equals x squared. So a rough sketch is good, good enough. Uh, but we want to make sure it's relatively accurate here. So, so we have y equals x squared, y equals square root of x. Just like that, right? Uh, let's see. Where do they intersect? What is that? That's 1, right? So this is a pretty easy one. It just intersects at 1. Okay, <clears throat> and then we have these two x values. So this is x equals 1 fourth, which is right here. It's a vertical line, right? And x equals 1, which is this vertical line. All right, so what's the area that we're looking for? It's the area between 1 fourth and 1, right? Uh, notice that if you, um, so often I, I get students that sometimes uh, get confused here. So for example, they'll like maybe mark this as the area that we're looking for. But why is that not the correct area to uh, to mark, the one that I marked in uh, orange there? It's not between, so what you want to look at is it's the area between all of the uh, curves that you're given, all of them. So notice if I pick what I just drew in orange, notice that's not between 1 fourth and 1, right? So it's like I'm ignoring that 1 that I was given. Um, so make sure that you're careful with that. So uh, this one here, so it's this area between here, right? All that. Okay, so that's not too bad, right? So um, 
So what would it be? The area would be the integral. How many integrals am I going to need? Just one, right? So from where to where? So x equals 1 fourth to x equals 1. And what order? Root x minus x squared, exactly. Exactly, because root x is greater um, than x squared on that on that interval. Okay, and then you just go through and you integrate and all that good stuff, right? So then here, what would I get? I would get x to the 3 halves times 2 thirds minus x cubed over 3 from 1 fourth to 1. And... So what is that? That's 2 thirds minus 1 third, right? Minus 2 thirds times, once, what's 1 fourth to the 3 halves? Five. 1 eighth, right? Okay, good. <coughs> and then minus 1 fourth cubed well I'm going to do 3 times 64 because that's a little bit uh, sad there okay so <laughs> so this is 1 third minus well, I don't know. What if we factor out the one third? What would that be? I would have one uh, one fourth minus one over sixty four. What is that? That's fifteen sixty fourths, right? Uh, uh, big numbers. What do I do? So, I don't know, do you multiply this by 64, top and bottom, right? So what is that? It's 49 over, oh, it doesn't even simplify, boo, okay, well that, I think, hopefully we did that right. Is that right? I think it's right. Okay. But the main thing is the strategy. So is the strategy good? Yeah? Alright. So let me give you give you guys one to try then. Alright, you guys ready? Do we do it together? Okay. Alright, so let's draw the picture. So let's take a look. Uh, let's see. So I have x is 1 over y. So um, when you have x as a function of y, um, it usually is not a good idea to rewrite it as a function of x. Uh, but in this case, uh, it probably is just because, uh, I don't know, it's simple and we've never graphed 1 over y. So thinking of 1 over x is much simpler. Um, do you guys remember what 1 over x looks like? Yeah, it just looks like this, right? <coughs> okay. Well, it looks like that and then down here too, right? Okay. Um, so that's fine. Uh, let's see. And then what about x equals 0? Vertical line at 0, right? Looks like that. Okay. Uh, how about... Oh, wait. I already did circle. Uh, how about y equals 1? Horizontal line at 1. Okay, and then last but not least, y equals e. So e is about 2.7 ish, right? Okay, so here's e.
All right. So what's the area that we're looking at? So it has to be between all four, right? So what do you say? What does that look like? Looks like that, right? It's all that stuff right there. Okay. So, well, uh, what's the area going to be then? How many integrals do I need? You sure? Okay, all right. What is it equal to then? Hmm. Well, I guess we should decide. Do we? Okay. So this is a really good problem for us to do at this point in time. Uh, I think we're having a miscommunication here. Um, what are we going to uh, be integrating with respect to x or y? So in this one, you can do it either way, but um, but it's it's different. Okay, so why don't we, since we're learning, let's do it both ways, two ways. Uh, with respect to x, because that's kind of what we're used to, and then let's do with respect to y. All right, so if I do it with respect to x, what do I need? So that means that I, I mean, basic, I need, I need to know what this point is, don't I? Okay, so what is that? That's x equals 1. How do I know that? Yeah, so notice it's when y equals to 1 right there, right? So y equals 1 uh, for a function y equals 1 over x or x is 1 over y. So whichever way you look at it, uh, it's 1. Okay, so um, so if I'm going to write down the red area um, as an integral, uh, so then this would be the integral from x equals something to x equals something else. So what would, what would those be? Okay. All right, now what? What minus what? What? Y? Wait, what y? Well, the function. Yeah. What function? So what's my function? What's the greater function? Okay. Minus? Okay. So, so there's a problem here. Do you guys see the problem, and do you see how to fix it? It changes. Yeah. So what what's happening? So you guys are not following the strategy. What's the strategy? What's the first thing we do after we draw a picture? <laughs> Find, the Find the intersection points. Why? Because when where they intersect is where you have to split up the integral, right? Notice how where they intersect. So right here, the, the greater function changes, right? So you have to use more than one integral if you're going to do it that way. Um, so, okay, so let's backtrack here a bit. So first of all, what is the intersection point right there? What is the x value where they intersect? Oh. So it's where y equals to e, right? So what is x equal to? 1 over, one over e, right? 
So if you just plug in E right there, then you get the X value, right? Okay, so it's just 1 over E. All right, so then what would be the area here? It would be the integral from 0 to 1 over E exactly of what minus what? E minus, so just in that section right here, this E minus 1, exactly. Okay, plus the integral from 1 over E to 1, and this time what's the greater minus left with? 1 over X minus 1 over X minus 1. Right? Okay, now uh, there is a small shortcut here in that this, if you look at the actual area itself, well, look at it, it's just a rectangle, right? So you don't actually need, I mean, if you evaluate the integral, that's fine, but it's just the rectangle in which you can just find the area of that by multiplying the length times the width, right? Uh, so that would save you, you know, just a, I don't know, a couple steps, uh, which is fine. Um, and then the second um, integral, so let's see, so what would that be? So what's the area of that rectangle? 1 over E times, so length E minus 1, right? E minus 1 uh, times... 1 over e. So e minus 1 over e is the area of that rectangle. Yeah? Okay. And then plus uh, this second integral, which is, what's the antiderivative of that? ln of x minus x evaluated from 1 over e to 1. Right? And then, <coughs> okay. So I'll let you guys do that part uh, in a minute. Um, or, you know, at home or whatever. But let's talk about the other way. So here, this I know this is something that we're not really used to, but um, if you look at it, instead of looking at it as functions of x, look at it as functions of y. So now look at it sideways, where you're now thinking of the... So let me erase some of this stuff here, maybe just to kind of... But now you're looking at it as... Um, greater minor, minus lesser still, but um, in this case, you have the greater function is on the right, lesser function is on the left, right? Yes? Okay, so if you're looking at it sideways, you're looking at that area, um, how many integrals would you need? Only one, right? Because notice, what are you going from and to? So now the from and to are y values, right? You're going from 1 to e. Notice there are no intersection points in between 1 and e, right? So the area is simply the integral from y equals 1 to y equals e. And notice, what is it of? Careful. 1 over y, exactly. It has to be a function of y, right? So 1 over y, which is the purple function, right? Minus what? Minus 0, right? There is no function there. It's just the, the y-axis. So that that's it, which is pretty easy, right? I mean, this is just equal to ln of y, right? From 1 to e. This we can do without a problem. This is actually the number one. That's the area, one. Uh, is the other one one? I guess so, right? Better be. Um, but do you guys see how the, the second one works? You just look at it a little bit sideways. Maybe if you, you know, like if you tilt your head, <laughs> like this, then it's the same thing, you know. You just have to remember it goes from bottom to top, right? Then from, so this from this y value to this y value, from the lower y value to the upper y value, 
and then greater minus lesser this time is right minus left. Other than that, same thing, right? Questions about that? No? You guys are okay? You sure? Sort of okay? Okay. 